It's like an all-American barbecue over here. <laughs> Greetings! And welcome to Bad Works! A DreamWorks podcast starring a happily unemployed photographer barely getting by with DoorDash, a disgruntled ex-journalist now writing Scott Pilgrim fan fiction, <clears throat> and a spineless asthmatic 27-year-old curmudgeon hey. sweeping movie theaters for a living. It's August when we f- when we record this. Wait. My birthday was two yeah. months ago, but it's been a while since we've been in here. I think I even messed it up the last time, but 27-year-old Woo-hoo! curmudgeon now. And I'm... Wait, you already said 26 for me, didn't you? I don't remember. No. Oh, you just don't say my age. Wow, no. I see how it is. Why would I do that? Because I because I, I have an age, too. We all have age anyway! <laughs> this is a podcast, as if you didn't know already, where we cover the DreamWorks catalog. And today, for episode 21, a personal favorite of mine, and I believe the other two... Woohoo! Megamind! Woohoo! <laughs> I saw this one... Back in high school, back around the time, just after it came out, somewhere in there. Whenever it came out physically, that's my own thing. We'll get into that later. Uh, you had seen this many times. Oh, multiple times. And this was your first? Yes. Okay. And we'll get into that. But before we start, just like to say there are spoilers. There probably will be spoilers. You know, these. this is a at this point almost an 11-year-old kid's movie. But I want to keep that magic there for all of you that haven't seen it. The magic of Megamind, because there's quite a bit. Yes. So without further ado, lead us Megamind. away. Megamind. <clears throat> Megamind has played the role of supervillain for many years, battling his arch nemesis and Metro City or Metrocity superhero Metro Man. After his latest escape from prison, Megamind finally wins, killing Metro Man and taking over the city. But with victory comes a price. The big blue-headed guy has no purpose. In the midst of an existential crisis, Megamind soon finds himself living a triple life as he continues his reign over Metrocity, woos Roxanne disguised as a museum curator Bernard, and trains loser sad boy Hal into Titan, a new superhero disguised as Space Dad. That's pretty complicated, isn't it? This is a kid's movie. Yeah. As all the lives start to intersect... Megamind begins to find himself on the side of good as Titan begins his own reign of terror. This is your Wait. first time. You should start this. I don't realize Titan was spelled that way. <laughs> yeah, that's how he spelled it. Wait, wait. When uh, he... How's it spelled? Like tights. Oh. I didn't I remember when that. he spelled out Titanville with oh. his heat vision. That's why I spelled it that way. I didn't realize that. Sorry, go on. I just noticed yeah, that. This that's is your neat. first time, Jake. Yeah. You should start because. You have a little bit of experience with the trailers back in 2010. Do you enjoy basking in the warm I'm going to be honest with y'all. Ready for this? So, yeah, as Dickie would say, a hot take. What's your hot take? I hated this movie um, when I first heard about it in 2010. Um, oh, I thought you said you hated it now. I was no, scared. No, no. Okay. Um, I never wanted to see it. Um, I just can't take Will Ferrell for that much time. I really can't. No, duly noted that Jake is not a Wolf Ferrell fan. I mean, it, it's a specific kind of humor. It you is. Can't, I can't blame you. It, it, continue. It's not one that I can do for a full movie. Five minutes to a half an hour. SNL. That's why funnier, yeah. SNL, Funnier Die. Like both of those. Things like Stranger Than Fiction. Wonderful. One of my favorite movies. This type of humor. I mean, after seeing Elf 20,000 times. <laughs> I just, I looked at it and I went, no, nah, nah, nah. it's, it's a lot of yelling. It's basically the, all you need to know about his style of humor is his SNL, the audition tape of get off the shed. That is his humor in a nutshell. It's just him yelling and acting childish. Yeah, pretty much. Good news is I watched it now at, well, the behest of this project and I, you, much of your pleading over the past however many years I've known you and I do really love it. Um, it subverted expectations in just like at every every hero story point that you would expect. It was just like, oh, nope, gonna nope, do the other thing. Gonna... Oh, nope, gonna do the other thing. Oh, nope, gonna do the other thing. And it feels natural. It doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, it, it's it. not no. gimmicky. It's, yeah, exactly. No, it I, it is really good. I did not expect it to like it as much as I did. Um, well done. Everybody involved with that. Honestly, I, <clears throat> yeah, I could not agree with you anymore. I, I love that it didn't feel like it was, like, it was doing the subversions because, like, it had, like, it came up naturally. I just, 
Yeah, it's not doing the subversion because it wants to subvert my expectations. It's mm-hmm. doing it because it's just taking just the natural. story in a different. And I still, I still can't believe this is a kids movie. This gets deep. Like they're pulling some Pixar level stuff with like, what is your self worth? Are you asking a ten year old to like, like that's? I just love that. Like they're asking these big questions and they're doing it in a fun way, in like a fun manner. Because it never feels like, oh boy. What am I, what is my purpose in life? No, it's just, I mean, it brings up those questions, but it does it like in a, like I said, in a fun way. Well, you get that montage of him doing everything he ever wanted to do. At just sit, set up at City Hall. Mm-hmm. And then just after the montage, I think it's Crazy Train is playing during that. Yeah, probably. And he's just <laughs> sitting at the desk with one of those, what are those called? The bird things that dip their oh, beak in the water. it's like dipping its, yeah. And, he, I don't know. and he's like lamenting to it that... He's just bored because his whole existence was on him losing to a hero, and now he's won. And now he won. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, it's just, ah, oh, I love it. And I like the transitioning into mine. I like the, there's a lot of heart in it, too. I brought yeah. this up in other movies, but DreamWorks, when they when they have the heart of the movie in the right place, they really do a good job. They know how to pull it off. Because I, I feel for him. And outside of that, like, everything with Roxanne feels natural. And when you get to the reveal, it doesn't feel forced. It doesn't feel wrong. It's like, of course she'd react this way. And of course he'd react this way. And neither one of them knows how to deal with this. Mm-hmm. It's just, I, I kind of, I like it. She, the, the criticism with her character is she still becomes the damsel in distress at the end. Well, yeah. But she's yeah. a fleshed out character. I know. And that, that scene in the rain after, after the dinner, that hurts. I remember sitting there because my whole story is I saw this. I think I was a junior in high school mm-hmm. and we had a day for some reason in our math class it's like we're gonna watch a movie today just for the heck of it I put in Megamind and I was like oh okay and we get to that scene and I'm already liking it and I remember in that moment being like I'm feeling like I feel really bad for him what is this like how I'm are- not familiar with it <laughs> is this what it's like to feel it's feeling bad for the villain. This is the kid's version of a clockwork orange. There's no other similarities really at all. I just thought it was funny. Because it really yes. is. You feel bad for the villain. Of course. Would you really call him a terrible person? The only thing he's really killed is a baby seal. It's just... <laughs> baby seal baby left seal. boots or whatever. Shoes or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I made that yeah, comparison I, just for the joke's sake. No, I... Yeah, that's a, quite a... <laughs> But it's true, like you it feel works. you feel for I, it, and and I, I know a lot of people kind of brush this one aside because it felt like the usual superhero movie. Plus, I think Despicable Me was the same year. Yeah, yeah. kind of Wait, making the sympathetic. Really, villain. that came out the same. I think it's the same year. Interesting, and everyone that, loves those movies, so that's why this. I mean, like, it made money. We we have it right in front. This made did. money. Yeah, but Despicable Me was huge. It's still big. It's had. Subsequent movies. This has like a short those. film, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. This, although, as much as I want more Mega Mind because I like the first one the most, I don't think if there's a good sequel story that you can tell. At that least, is it's true. at least not an easy one. Like yeah. it would take quite a bit of thought work and effort to thought make work. Sequel. Thought work. Thought work. Never heard thought that. Work. I, I, thought I, work. Yeah. Thought work. Orange. <laughs> thought, thought work. Orange. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I may have made it up right now, but it sounds like something. It sounds, it sounds like a buzzword. Like, don't forget about thought work. Sounds like a safe word too. <laughs> thought, <laughs> thought, <laughs> thought, thought work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thought work. Thought work. I think the vein <laughs> popped. <laughs> Is there a vein right here? Something, something was pooch protruding. <laughs> Is it the size of Megamind's head? Oh, no. <laughs> no, Dickie, that's his Adam's apple. Maybe. It's in there somewhere. A lot of fat in there. Plus, this high nasally voice doesn't make it any better. <laughs> Megamind! Okay. Hey, Megamind! <laughs> oh, yes. I, also, can I say, this is Brad Pitt's first Appearance in a, an animated movie since Sinbad, because he's oh, Metro Man and he's great. 
One of my favorite scenes. Well, not only is the opening scene great, where their banter back and forth oh. is killing me. It's the and this is more in the physical acting in this scene, but when they go to they find his hideout, <laughs> they're looking at the glass, and he comes through the door, turns around, and goes. <laughs> yeah. like, what do I say? So all he does is turn around, the floor creaks, and they oh, just hey. <laughs> He just killed me. Then. And I, Music Man was born. Oh Why? my god! So I can keep the M at East. <laughs> so I loved him. Uh, him and um, Jonah Hill. I thought he was really good in this. He <laughs> is. I wrote Sad Boy. It is more of the nice guy than the sad boy. Yeah. Like I wrote Sad Boy, but then I think in my mind, I'm thinking he is like the original nice guy, where it's like. See, I'm the nice guy, and the girls don't mm, like me. Even likes. I deserve them. It's like, Mm-hmm. It's like That's, I want I want to sympathize with you because you uh, you like her, but she's obviously not into you, and you think you deserve like that. It's it is a nice guy trope, it and is. then they do it well. Well, they, where it's like, no, this so, is not this is toxic. This is not That's okay. That's what I like that when they did that. Here's a question: Do you think that because Jonah Hill is a Titan, right? Yeah. Yep. Do you think that he's what grounds this movie? Because and think about it right now, he's the only like trope that's like. I saw him in the movie and I was like, oh, he's going to be the villain. I think they've, they kind of set that up and you're kind of expecting it. That's, yeah. Because everything else is just, how do I say it? Without saying subverts expectations, but subverts expectations. Everything else goes a different way than what I. Subversive, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. everything else goes a different way than what I expected except him. You kind of go. Yeah, Yeah, well, I guess you have to have that one. That, that one thing that, that one keeps thing. it. Mm-hmm. And it's this thing where he's not, I wouldn't even call him inherently a bad person. I just think. He's a person. Yeah. And, and just given his... that much power overnight, he does feel like not only do I have this power, I, I deserve things. Mm-hmm. And when, That's when, you think when, when he is rejected, of course he spirals out of control. It doesn't mean he's a likable character. But it, it makes just, sense. He's, he's, you, you can see his that, progression that, up that to that point. That sounds a little bit like a poignant thing you just said. I know it's almost. Huh. Huh. It's almost if you think you deserve things. What? Yeah. What? No. <laughs> yeah, he. Again, you see it coming, but when it is happening, like this makes sense. This makes perfect sense, and there's not really a weak character. The, the, no, the they're really. Like, really it just, it, minion. Minion is also a pretty good side character. When in the trailers, it's like, okay, it's it's a, what's it, his name? David Cross playing mm-hmm. another one of these. Minion Side was characters. the fish. Yeah, was the fish. Yeah, the yeah. robot yeah, fish I would, thing. I would probably say he's the weakest of them. And still, but even fine. that's not that he's, bad. He's still entertaining enough to yeah. watch. So, like uh, every time he says something stupid, and I also hope that it's David it, it Cross. makes you laugh. It does. It really does. <laughs> and I, then I, um, there's a betrayal scene there of some kind. It's been a long time since I watched it, but there's a betrayal of Minion scene, mm-hmm. and it hurts. They get, they get into it a does. fight yeah, because get, Megamind. Because, like, Minion is still like, oh, we are still the bad guys. And Megamind says, like, well, maybe I don't want to be the bad guy. Mm-hmm. <gasps> you know, that one of those moments. And then the, wow, that's the like, line Just that, like David Cross. That was impressive, actually. <laughs> uh, and I bring this up, and I know he's watching. A good friend of mine laughed at this part. And now I laugh because of it when he's like, I'm just going to pack my things. Or and he puts, like, one thing in a lunch. <laughs> see, see, now, it, yeah, zoom in on me right here. Thank you. I'm gonna, good friend. There, I'm going to, <laughs> going to laugh at that every time now because of you. <laughs> Job it, well done. It just comes down to the humor in this is really good. It, I, I'm seriously finding a hard time criticizing much. Like I, nothing really doesn't hold up under scrutiny. Like I just feel like it's solid through and through, which is impressive, honestly. Because like, what what came before this again? Was it Trek? Shark Four, yeah. So which is I a mean, solid. Movie, but this is that is much actually, better. yeah. Yeah, I I can honestly say that I went into this thinking, oh, this is going to be the the DreamWorks B team because they did Shrek earlier that year and How to Train Your Dragon and was the How same to year. Train Your Dragon. So I was like, ah, like, there's no way they're going to have like three big ones in one. Year. Yeah, there's no way. This is the awful. Yeah. No, this is this is kind of better than Shrek Four. Oh, oh no. much better. Yeah. <laughs> And it's, it's definitely it's not still, better than How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah, it's still but, got that, no, that yeah. B-team animation look. Again, nothing gets the animators. Just a lot of the budget and effort gets put into How to Train Your Dragon and Shrek that year. I mean, it, I think one of them got pushed from 2009. 
the I don't know the inner workings. The whole point is like you can tell it's not as good looking as even Kung Fu Panda a couple years before. But yeah, but is solid. that a, but is that a it's style good. choice? Yeah, but and again, I think that's the style choice. Might, yeah, I'm just because saying it has that B movie look too. I think it's because they're using humans, but this does look better. Everything sort of clean the way it does does kind of reflect ish like old like gold age and silver age comic books yeah that's true it is kind of drawn it that way which honestly if if the style that you're drawing fits the budget that you have a plus you're perfect you're set let's roll green light it like it makes sense that's probably why it was made that way I we think- can make this good for cheap no <laughs> no 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 i even oh think my. i think guillermo del toro was a creative consultant on this was he i what? think he was because I know for, for, for Rise of the Guardians, he became a real big creative consultant, I think, for, like, creature design. In this, I can't remember the specifics. I thought I remember reading that. I could be wrong. I thought I read that some kind of creative consultant. Because uh-huh. I think it's around this time where they started bringing in people to make them look more stylistic for the most part. Interesting. And, Del Toro was a good choice. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's. I didn't know that. They, I just want to pinch his ears and tell him how much I love him. Can you do that to I, me? No. <laughs> I never lied. Ba da ba. Ba da da ba. Ba da ba. Da 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 da. Da. Mega mindings. <laughs> oh, I had to bring up this joke. This the joke when and whenever Will Ferrell was doing his Marlon Brando for Space Dad, it's already <laughs> funny. But when he's like, "It's all fathomable." <laughs> what? It's unfathomable. It's without fathom. <laughs> <laughs> you, you lied to Space Mom. <laughs> it kills me. Just so I just love it's. Oh my god! I don't know. I'm a huge Will Ferrell fan, so I just anytime he does his stupid Will Ferrell, it's yeah. like that. The, it's the mispronunciations, funny. atrocity, shul, <laughs> and of course what Orl. <laughs> Oh, that's a really, I remember thinking that was a clever way of Titan knowing it was him in disguise as Metro Man. Because he says Matrocity. He's like, nice try. There's only one person I know that says Matrocity. Oops. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, and that mo- it's such a great moment, too, because you think Metro Man has shown up. And you go, all right, you pump your fist. And then you realize, oh, it's him. And then you go, actually, that does work oh, better. That's kind of an easy bailout if it was actually Metro Man. And I like how... It's something people have brought up online, too, where Metro Man choosing this might seem selfish, but when his entire life has not been for himself, it's like, it's kind of admirable in a way. Like, yes, you could say it's your public duty at the same time. It's like, he's never, he's never been his own person. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing with the trope of like, like of the, the subversion thing of like, like, wow. Yeah. I never even thought like, it's not just a Megamind purpose thing. He also is like. We're just going through the motions every They're single time. They're giving these superheroes humanity, which is slowly starting to become a more popular thing in like mainstream media now. Because that, like that is yeah, that that's very interesting. Because now that you say that, and I think about it, he never actually comes back as a superhero. No, nope. no. So the skeleton coming back into the where were they? What was that? Was like a planetary observatory? Or observatory, or observatory, or observatory I think what, it whatever it was, the skeleton literally is the death of that superhero. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just, but the character is not dead. That's what I'll, I'll repeat it again. I'm just impressed as to how deep and just how like serious they were able to put these like themes and ideas into a kids movie. It's just impressive. I was gonna say too the what was I gonna say? Crap! I just lost it. I had it. Oh, at the beginning when he's about to shoot fire the death ray and nothing happens Mm -hmm. and when it cuts to you know the town hall where they're on the screens and there's one frame where he disappears it's just a little and that's where he went off with his super speed you see it's real quick and it's a nice little because that's right at the beginning because you don't even notice it yeah it could be a projector thing too right you're not even and then when you rewatch the movie and i was looking for it i'm like i know somewhere he disappears and that's there it is that's nice also I think they they're in they're in Michigan. When the death based ray on shoots, where the death ray shoots, yeah, it shoots on like the coast of like Lake Michigan. <laughs> no, it is like legit Grand Rapids. Yeah, is it really? It's like yeah. it's like <laughs> literally close to where we are. Woohoo! We made it into. Megamind! I saw. It, I remember seeing that. I go. 
Hey, that's where we are. Hey, blast us with your rain, please. Woo! That is awesome. I did not notice that after rewatching. You know, it's another fun joke that I just absolutely lost it the first time. It's the posters he puts up around Metro. I'm just going to say Metrocity. Just say it's so much better. Or I'm a or it's, Instead of the, because it's the Obama, yes, we can, but I just, no, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> like that, oh, it kills me. It kills me. <laughs> no, you can't. I want, of course, him, the highway to hell, oh my God. going up the steps, yeah. and it's right there, such... he look, he hits it, and he can't figure it out. I... They're all just kind of. <laughs> I love, that's such a, oh my gosh. I love that so much. It's just. It's just funny. It's, it's a fun like, time. It's, it's very rewatchable too. Oh my god, it's so rewatchable. You say you've seen it more than I have. This was my third time watching oh, it. We used to put that. I feel like I watched that like at least thirty times as a kid. I don't. I think I owned the DVD. My cousin owned the DVD. Somebody in the family owned the DVD. Oh my god, every time. Just I mean, imagine imagine like little seven to ten year old kids just jamming out to ACDC. You're having a good time. We're on the highway to hell. That was. Oh, I don't know why this year got it worse, but it did. <laughs> Is it the echo? The point. Yeah, it's off the foam. <coughs> no. That's how strong you were there, Dickie. You echoed off the foam. <coughs> I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> you sure? Yes. For those of you who don't know, Jared has a history of abusing Dickie's back. Whoa, whoa, that is whoa, no, whoa, whoa. That's taken out of context. Whoa. The man was choking. <laughs> if not for me punching him in the back as hard as I could, he would not be in this podcast. Dang it. What have I done? <laughs> you could me and me about five years ago. No, I just let nature take its course. <laughs> you were eating something with like jalapenos. It was chips. I'm pretty sure it was, it was like something chips. like that. Or it might yeah. have been a pizza. Or something Maybe. with jalapenos on it, and you got one stuck down the wrong pipe. I could have done nothing. No, I decided to slug it out of you, and I saved your life. You did, and left a giant welt on his back. <laughs> you know, it's worth being able to blur. Had a minor stroke. It's worth it being able to breathe. Hold on. Why do I smell burning toast? <laughs> no, that smells like pop. Never mind. <laughs> Jared's, on the other hand, smells like whiskey. <laughs> That's disgusting, Jared. <laughs> well, you smell it. I'm like, oh, this is good. Just take a little big old it swing like out of that. And, oh, it went up into my brain. It opened your mega mind. Wow, that just killed Hey, let's get some jalapenos again. <laughs> oh my god. Wow, that just, that just <laughs> killed it. Hi, trying to follow that uh, one up. Time for some water. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anybody? Um, anything Anything else you gotta say about Megamind? I'm just trying, I don't, I, I, I don't want to miss it. anything. Are you watching You're it? You're watching it. <laughs> Are you trying to get to the part where the with the with the with the with the, 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 the ray the death the, beam the, the death beam thing shooting down right? Yep. <laughs> you know, see if it goes to Grand Rapids. Yep. <laughs> at what point in the movie is that again? It's right at the beginning. And it's just right at the beginning. Yeah. That's when he kills Metro Man. I didn't think it was that far in the beginning. Yeah, that's the death ray shooting down. Right, but I didn't think From that that happened like until like a half hour into the movie. No, I remember he kind escapes. Of. He, the origin, he escapes prison and then mm-hmm. kidnaps Roxanne there. and that whole thing. Oh, uh, no. It's more like Cadillac-ish. Oh, that far north? Yeah. Is it really? Well, come here. Man, don't I have, I have too around. many cords to, like, turn the computer around. I, I trust you. We're, it's taking, we're taking a second to get up. <laughs> <laughs> we we have to know where in Michigan Who in Michigan did he shoot at? Yeah, that is that is kind of close to Cadillac. That's kind of close to Cadillac. Yeah, it's a little bit. All right, for those of you in Cadillac, you were shot at by Megamind. Congratulations. <laughs> but somewhere in the distant future, you do succeed in building a metrocity. That honestly is a good thing. So notice how when Jake was showing me something, you know, 
that's involving geography, Dickie did not go look because it wasn't going to make a difference to him. Well, <laughs> I know I I know my own state at least. It's somewhere. How am I going to do this? Oh no! Here. <laughs> nope. Ish. Right. You keep moving your finger. You go, it's so weird. Right so here. right now you're like, like. Mm. He's pointing at his hand for those that, that it, it, can't it's Michigan. see us. I'm, I'm seeing that. He's pointing at his hand. Right? Because like, well, like, you need another Kendall geography like lesson. An hour north of us, right? Ish. Mm, hour, hour and a half. half. Oh, well, my driving, it's about an hour. So That is true. <laughs> <laughs> Dickie does not drive um, like an old grandma. You, Jared does. You can't because I grew up in Detroit. No, that's right. That's when you get he, when you get the opportunity, you got to take it, or someone like, else will. See, you no cop, no stop. Grandma, but but I have found a lot of elderly women drive pretty crazy when I'm in the car. Man, that sounds bad. Are right? you referring <laughs> to your mother? <laughs> no, oh, I was a good driver. Were you throwing shots at what old ladies? Oh, I'm just saying. Like I've noticed, even in the movies, they're crazy. <laughs> crazy. I'm just saying. I am a slow driver. Oh yes, oh, I know. I've ridden with, with you. Me. And you refuse yeah. to ride with me, but somehow you're riding Mario Kart over there. <laughs> I ride with you. Uh-huh. I've been riding with you for years. Uh-huh. Not willingly. <laughs> I, mean, I guess it's not like I want to I guess I'm just a better driver. I'm Probably. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm terrible. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> I do try pretty crazy, though. Anyway. Try to think if there's anything else. I wrote all these notes, and I kind of cover them all in one paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh, I did that. I did that. I did that. You did oh, that? I did that. That works. Oh, we another line. Sound drag. Yeah, we talked about It's basically. Drag. I was going to say, yeah. we're kind, it's kind of all lumped into one big thing because it all. We just genuinely just, like it. Yeah, it just it's really, meshes together really well. You can't yeah. really talk about bits and pieces as much as the whole. Because, like, you, that's a really good point, actually. Like, yeah, there's, it, like. As a whole, it's really good and really consistent. Yeah. Like, there's, like, no lulls. And it's just, like, tightly woven together. Like. From the soundtrack to the writing to the messages to the acting, like it all just fits. And it's got one of my favorite parts at the end where they've won the day. We we won, we won. And everyone's running around cheering. Back up, you savage! <laughs> <laughs> Back He's up. Just, it's it's a role where I stop hearing Will Ferrell at times just because I'm. You know, immersed in the movie because then I have to back up and go, oh yeah, that's Will Ferrell. I'm just, I'm seeing the character. He's so good as this character. And again, sequels could have been much worse. DreamWorks yeah. does have a good track record with sequels that's for the most I'm part. I'm kind and of glad that they didn't do a sequel. Because you're right, they probably would have messed it up. That's not the point I made at all. Did you even hear what I said? <laughs> yeah. I said they have a good track record with sequels for the most part. Well, I think you said they had a bad one. Do you even listen to me? <laughs> Mostly. I literally just said they do a good job with the sequels for the most part. Yeah, they've had du a couple duds with the sequels, but a lot of their sequels are good. Even the lesser movies have good sequel. Like, yeah, I don't know why. Who like, are you? What is in your do? The funny thing is that I'm finally able to hear out both my ears now. White boy summer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Did you go to the beach. Oh, I will. If it was a friend's friend's little link. Did you barbecue with your apron? Yes. Did you make coleslaw? Yes. Did you go to Lollapalooza? No, I would never go to Lollapalooza. Did you go to say there's it? There's a lot of did, people he, there that are. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Just say it. I was white boy saying, summer. I think he was trying to walk his way out of that. <laughs> I think he saw where you were going. White was, boy summer. I did that, oh. or he's very afraid he has COVID now. I, I'm, I'm vaccinated, so. Probably. 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 Boy, son. I mean, I'm not complaining about everything else, though. Everything else is fun. No. Just saying. It has summer. been. I'd rather be that than Blue Boy At least summer. seven days, so. <laughs> hey, Megamind. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, Megamind's blue. Ah, exactly. How He's blue, dare you. Dabba -dee -dabba -doo. He's blue, 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 dabba -dee -dabba Rule number Doo. one. Say it with me. He blue, does dabba -dee -dabba not sing. <laughs> But he's blue. Dabba dee dabba doo. And bald. And bald. Bla bald. Are you okay? <laughs> I have a lot of energy coming out of. It's probably because I just down. Do you mountain. smell eggs or something? So he's already racist to blue people. <laughs> What's it called if you're if you're prejudiced against bald people? 
Baldest. 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 You're yeah. racist and baldest. All in the same sentence. I hope you can live with yourself. I'm Raldest. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm Raldaldest. He wrote Charlie the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, he did. He wrote BFG too. And the Twits. Yeah. And the didn't didn't he? Ronald and the Dahl. Great Roll Doll. Roll Doll. Didn't roll. he write the Fantastic Mr. Box too? I think that is him, yeah. Yeah. We could go off on a whole tangent. God bless yeah. him. Ma- Megamind. Megamind. <laughs> Woo! We did it. Yeah, it Mega, seems Mega. to be it seems to be just another one where it's like it's really good. We all like it a lot. We have different, you know, you've seen it the most. And this is his first time and we're all kind of like, yeah, this is good. We're not really pushing each other or anything cuz yeah. I think this not- deserves more love. I do remember like I, a year or two ago having a friend say cuz I mentioned how much I love it. He goes, "Where is all this Mega Mind love coming from?" And I I, I said mm-hmm. to him like, what are you talking about? I've been by myself. Everyone I talked to has not seen it. And he goes, no. Like, everyone I talked to is all There's, of a sudden watching it and loving it. No, and I'm like, that, that's happening right now. There's literally, a, it's <clears throat> it's a Megamind resurgence. It's a, a Megasons, if you will. Like It's a Megamind awakening. <laughs> it's a Megasons. Exactly. I like that. <laughs> Thank I like you. It. Okay, right now, wow. timestamp time stamp this, someone. He liked a I pun, liked I said. one of his puns. I did. It's not even that good, but I liked it. A Megasons. Yes. Oh, no. Wow, I got a gold medal for that one. I'm excited. Thank you. I just gave him a fist bump. I appreciate that, Jared. Thank you for finally liking one of my puns. It will probably never happen again. No, no probably not. <laughs> not we, still have, we still have twenty movies to go. Right, as a he still has time to like <laughs> strangle you on camera. Yeah, that's true. Any closing Anywho, thoughts on uh, yep, Mega Minds? I think I, yeah, oh, this November finish. will be eleven years old. Twenty ten. Wow, that's wild. Yeah. Again, it's an, it's old. it's just like the other movies where. I kind of wish we got a universe in a way, even if it was like, because they, I've heard their shows are good. DreamWorks shows are good. I, I think it works. It's a superhero thing. It works mm-hmm. episodic. No, it definitely does. I would have. It would have. It's one of those things. It's a what if. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> I like a what if thing, and obviously, like giving uh, superheroes more humanity is kind of like what um, the boys is doing. So, like, I like they kind of do a similar thing with this. I could. See that happening and working. Mega Mind should show up in the boys. Oh, get Will Ferrell put the god. Get, I think they Will, dressed him up for something once as Mega Mind. Just do that to him and throw him into Will the boys. Will Ferrell meets um, <sighs> Homelander right there. That's all I want to see. Are they in season three yet? Yeah. Well, it, they're working on it still. They're still filming it. Okay. As of right as now. As of right now. It's as August, August right now. August 20th, 21. Three is the one with Jensen Eccles as the, yeah, the buddy. bearded wonder. Yeah, buddy. I'm excited. But yes, Mega Mind, fantastic, Megamind. amazing. Yeah. Please watch it if you haven't. If you have. We just, if we haven't, we just spoiled everything for you. Yeah. Yeah, if you haven't watched it, that's, you probably shouldn't listen. But There's if, probably plenty of jokes and clips that are stand out that we haven't brought up just because there's so true. many. That is true. So just I, if, and, I do have a question. Okay. Remember that guy that was like the librarian? Bernard. Yes. Yeah, it shows what happens to him in, in the either mid credit or after credit scene. Okay, what happened to him? So he, you know, how he, oh, what was that called? He turned him into the little cube, which you add water to bring him back, right? Okay. Yeah. He left him in his pocket. Minion's doing the laundry, and all of a sudden he pops out. <laughs> That's yeah. hilarious. I, I didn't think see it's. That. I think it's. A mid or after credit scene, and I think I, I waited through the credits because I thought I heard that, and I go, okay, that's funny. Now that was Ben. That was Ben Stiller too. They did was after it really? credits. I, I wrote it in. I'm not reading the binder. <laughs> I made that binder He's just for us. Just shoot from the hip. And I, I like have it. read through this binder thoroughly. Yep, Ben Stiller's Bernard. He's just kind of like Bernard. What's that face? How about that? I did not know that there was a yep. credit scene. And J.K. Simmons is the prison warden. Makes sense. He's always that makes sense. He's you, like he, you, fantastic fish, you. <laughs> Yes, I have been, have him in any role that he can yell. I think it's perfect. Anyway, that's that's it. that's Mega Mind. Yeah. Up next for our next episode, one of my absolute favorites. Oh. This whole thing. This is also an absolute favorite. This, we got back we got to back, back absolute to back favorites. You say like oh, this is one of my favorite or my oh. all time favorites or my childhood favorites <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Just like Mr. Hype Train over here is always <laughs> on the hype train. But this really is what's going to happen best. if you, Dicky ever comes down from the hype train. That's true. Well, he has before. Could happen possible. again. 
No, I'm just saying this next one is you? Kung Fu Panda 2. I Woo! consider it one of not only DreamWorks spec sequels, this might be one of the best just sequels. Oh, yeah. It's oh, so, so good. good. I think it's underrated. Just immensely underrated. underrated. Yes, it is. Everywhere you look, it's just fine. Like decent mm. scores and what and people tell me like, oh, I thought it was fine. I'm like, are you kidding? This is so good. Uh, we'll get into that in our yeah, next episode. Next but uh yeah, don't forget to Follow, like, and subscribe, all the good stuff. We are always putting out funny clips on our socials as well. So give us a follow anywhere at All Slate Media. And this is our ASMR. Cut that out. Sells seashells by the seashore. How much wood could woodchuck chuck? Woodchuck could chuck. Wood. A woodchuck could chuck as much as a woodchuck could chuck. Thus concludes the 21st episode of That Works, a DreamWorks podcast. We'll see you next time. Have a good one. Check, check, one, two. Check, 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 point blue. <laughs> <laughs> How are the volume levels, Jake? Are they sounding good? They sound great. Right up until Dickie started talking. They sounded crispy. <laughs> Did you really stir your new ear? I earned it all! I earned it all!